This is a Yemen. It's a Yemen coffee. It's a pre-shipped sample, so it's actually probably a lot greener than most Yemen would look like. But you can see it's really yellow. You can see it's got the typical mocha small bean. Um, you see the the reddishness in the in the crease. And you can see too, it's it's real dense, although there's a mix of some coffees in here. This is a golden bean. The, they think this is a real special bean and it's got good flavor. It's actually slightly woody flavor and it's from malnutrition of the tree and poor uptake from the roots. Um, but they try to sell it to Saudi Arabia for extra money. And you see just a real mix, real heterogeneous in terms of the general appearance. You compare that dry process coffee, which is yellow and has all the silver skin and a lot of variegated color, to some Sumatras which are wet hauled coffees. Lately they've been changing the wet haul process so that it creates a more uh, silver skin free, chaff free look. Um, so you can see here there's very little silver skin on this coffee. The reason is that they used to wet haul when the coffee was a lot wetter which means they take the coffee in parchment, they semi dry it and then they haul it when it's got, it used to have like 35, 45, even 50 percent moisture. Now they do it at 25 percent moisture and you get this this nicer appearance. You're also getting a more acidic cup from a lot of Sumatras and Sulawesi's or perceived acidity than you used to have. So it's not necessarily what people want. You see here some of the typical like splitting in, in, in Sumatra coffee, and physical damage to the coffee. You see over drying, this sort of splitting on the ends. Um, Sumatra is still a very ugly coffee in a lot of ways and part of that is because it's the only place where they take coffee, dry it on the, uh, you know, haul it and then dry it as green coffee with no protective parchment layer on the patios. So you get uh, quite a lot of issues with coffee being smashed and sort of physically abused and, and you like this split on the end and sort of smashed down. And that does affect coffee in the roaster. This is just another Sumatra sample that doesn't look as physically brutalized, but um, you know, it's very much the same same issues. A lot of Sumatra's Katimor cultivar. This, uh, compare that to, this is a kind of an older sample, but this is a, a geisha coffee. Just the way you can see cultivar in the coffee. Here's the real long, elongated geisha bean right here. Um, and you know, there's a mix of coffee in here. If you look right uh, here, it's a fairly rounded bean. And geisha will do that. Geisha is not a stable cultivar, so it produces a lot of different things. But the one thing I think people look for is that elongated shape. Um, that's a way you tell cultivar in the cup. This is just an interesting sample here. Um, I'll show you why. Hopefully it will work. I mean, it plays a little trick. First of all, we see I get this sample, it smells really bad, and then we see this insect damage. This is a boring insect on the tree, a broca type uh, insect. It has a very opaque appearance, um, which is not a common appearance in coffee of great quality. You get a more of a translucence. But um, let's see if we can uh, actually show you. This will be interesting to see. Let's shut down the lights. Okay. There we go. This is, uh, this is UV light you're looking at. And it's showing up pretty well. Uh, so if we look around, what we get here are these uh, glowing beans. So right here, this is one and this is one. So let's move up a little. So this translucence, or, or uh, luminescence right here, this is normal coffee here under UV light, and this is a luminescent bean. This is from bad drying, or from a bacterial infection of the coffee that has taken over probably as a result of bad drying. Here's another luminescent coffee right here, this one. And those result in some off flavors in the cup. Um, this is a terrible sample. This happens to be a Puerto Rico that obviously either got wet on the patio or something else. 
Now let's go back and look at these Sumatras again because I'll show you why Sumatra is such a sketchy origin. Right, the coffee you're looking at right here is a total luminescent bean. Uh, here's a, a full luminescent bean right here, right here. Um, what you get a lot in Sumatra are, are partially luminescent. Like, see this one back in here is, is partially luminescent, and this one. So, a really good dry, uh, wet process coffee will not have that. Um, let's look at this other sample. Yeah, equally, equally bad. You can see right here. Um, this isn't telling you it's a terrible cup. It tells you that there's been problems in drying and you might have sour beans or you might have some other off flavors as a result of that. Um, when we go back, I'm going to try to go back here and look at some of our good coffees. Let's say even this sample, which was our which was our um, our wet Columbia sample. That's a very good looking sample under UV. Absolutely no sign of pulper nicking. No sign of defect. Let's look at our our Columbia that's a little bit older right next to it. Perfect sample. Absolutely no luminescence or sign. So I don't know if you guys can see that, um, but I think it's kind of interesting. I don't take it as some sort of, uh, you know, Bible on, uh, you know, this shows the difference between good coffee and bad coffee, but I think it's an, an interesting tool to use in looking at green coffee and trying to decide how it was dried, uh, which is critical in ultimately in the quality of the cup. So that's looking at green coffee, and I'm sure I could make about 20 of these, but I can't talk that long, so take care.